because you it's unsustainable. You can't have a small town of say 30,000 and dump 15,000 migrants in that town in a week. There's not enough food to feed those people. There's no housing for those people. And it's horrible and it's a humanitarian crisis. So to have, so to have Eric Adams, the mayor of New York City, say after just getting a few thousand migrants in New York, oh my God, this is a humanitarian crisis. Really? Thanks for letting us know. We've had millions. I'm Anna Giratelli, the Homeland Security Correspondent with the Washington Examiner in Washington, D.C. We're joined today by Congressman Pat Fallon from Texas. 1.5 million people released into the U.S. in the past two years. Uh, Greg Abbott has allowed people who willing, they sign a consent form, a legal form, saying, I want to board this bus to X destination. Um, he's allowed about 30,000 people to board those buses for a free ride to New York or Washington, D.C. or Chicago. And what the public is so infuriated about, or I should say Eric Adams, Democrats, um, is the idea of, you know, busing people to these cities. But 30,000 is a drop in the bucket yeah. for 1.5 million. And people are just going to their next destinations and they have lawful uh permission to be in the country now as they await their court dates but it's it's this sort of so, yeah, it, ununderstood. You know, it, that's amnesty that's what biden does he doesn't have the authority he's breaking the law and then they're playing a game and they're calling them now if you look at all the liberal papers which is really rather, rather redundant because most are liberal say well they're asylum seekers well remember when they were they used to be illegal aliens and then they were illegal immigrants and then they were undocumented workers and now they're asylum seekers this is the language of the left they are illegal migrants claiming asylum because that's what the non-governmental organizations tell them to do and the Biden administration is using our tax dollars to undermine our own laws and undermine our own country this is an invasion and it's very unfair to all the people people north and south of the border for several reasons these are 99.9% of these people are economic migrants Case in point, somebody from Venezuela. It is a really, it's it's chaos in that country. An authoritarian regime that doesn't have central control. Okay, I want to leave because I think someone is coming after me. And there are a lot of, there's a lot of violence in Venezuela. As soon as I reach Colombia, I've reached my asylum. I claim asylum in Colombia. The UN even says it's the next bordering country. If I then leave Colombia and transit through seven more countries to get to the United States, I'm an economic migrant. You know, you had Haitians in Chile that had lived there for a few years. And then in mass, they come to the United States. They're not asylum seekers. We're playing a game. So let's call them, call this whole game for what it is. That's what it is. And they have no lawful right to be here. And Joe Biden is sending millions into the interior of the country. And when I, I think personally, if I was the governor right now, I would have, I would ask every single person in Texas, would you like to go to San Francisco and send them right to Nancy Pelosi's house? I would then say, would you like to go to New York? Send them to Chuck Schumer's house. Oh, how about Dick Durbin in Illinois? And I do know that he sends some to Kamala Harris's, the borders are, uh, to her uh, house, her the vice president's residency in Washington. We should then send them to every single sanctuary city in the country. If this is what you want, this is what you advocate for, and you deal with the consequences of this unlawfulness. You have this on your moral conscience, that 30% of these women, young women that make it through Mexico, transit either from Southern Mexico or anywhere else in the world and go all the way up that country. 30% of them are raped or sexually assaulted along the journey. You deal with that and the consequences. These are the kind of conversations that need to happen in front of the American people come 2024. And Joe Biden needs to be fired.